Bro, I have ups and downs in my mindset. Like there are weeks I'm the man, and there's periods where I'm uh, when I'm rather down. <laughs> I know you soft, bro. This nigga said when I'm rather down. How do you stay consistent? Consistency is is a part of your attitude. You know why? Because attitude is uh, attitude is very assertive, right? I'm gonna give you an example. If I have a bad attitude, you put me at a fork in the road. You put me between two choices. Choice A is wake up. Let's let's start you in the middle of the path. Let's let's, let's create a scenario here. You wake up in the morning, right? Choice A is I'm tired. I can afford to go back to sleep for another two hours because I don't have to do anything until one, right? Now, I'm not talking about like once a week or once a month or once a year, right? I'm talking about you do this every time you can. This is choice A is creating a habit, which is wasting opportunities to take advantage of free time, wasting opp- like creating a habit of just going to sleep. And maybe you need it. Maybe you've been like for example, I just did this because I had four hours of sleep for like the last two weeks and some change, bro. Depending on my attitude is how I'm gonna judge what I like. Let's say do bump my shoulder and I just keep walking. Depending on my attitude is gonna choose my next decision. Right. If my attitude is, hey, man, what's your problem, dude? Whatever. I don't want to buy like whatever. It's not that like if my attitude is it's not that big of a deal. Then that's my attitude. My attitude is very nonchalant. It's laid back. It's it's just go with the flow. Like, my attitude might be it's not that big of a deal. Right. That's my attitude. Or excuse me. Or my attitude is you a bitch ass nigga for letting him do that. Now my attitude is very, like, in general, whether it's a good attitude, a positive attitude, a negative attitude, your attitude is very assertive on your actions, bro. So when you talk about being consistent, the reason I'm consistent, because my attitude is very assertive. Like, my attitude will tell me, what the fuck are you doing? Get your ass up. Or my attitude will tell me, dog, what you, what, don't let that slide. Like, like don't, just, don't just quit knowing you could do another rep or you could do five more reps. Why would you quit the set early? Or my attitude will tell me, you know you got more in you, so so step it the fuck up. Or my attitude will say, um, you know, I, I like to win big or win sm- or win, I like to win big or lose big. I don't do anything small. Like that's a that's a powerful fucking attitude. That attitude is like that internal coach, bro. It's, it means everything. I'm telling you. You if you ain't got an assertive attitude, if your attitude is like weak, you gotta fix that. Because if you do, let's say, for example, I, like I was saying earlier about sleeping in. Because if you sleep in and, and you do it every day, like I said, I'm not doing it. I'm not talking about like, man, I've been going hard for the last blah, 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 man. I slept in this morning. Like, fuck. And I got right back to it. If you do this shit, if it's a, you have a habit of just sleeping in, wasting time and bullshit, and there's not a voice in your head that says, what the fuck are you doing? Like, if, if, if your voice in your head just lets that shit slide, you got to fix something, bro. You got to fix your attitude. Because your attitude is just too late. But your attitude is just so lackadaisical. You just don't care. My attitude will be yelling at me like, man, get your lazy bitch ass up. Like, not even want some self-beating myself down type of shit. But just because, like, I, I, I just like having the attitude of courage, confidence, and, and, and dominance, and assertiveness. So, if I, let's say I seen a woman I want to talk to. Oh, all right. My attitude would say, oh, it's time to go. Oh shit, say something. I got say something. That's my attitude. Somebody else's attitude might be, um, damn, what do I say? I don't know if she's gonna like me. Excuse me, I don't know if she's gonna like me. Or or uh, so their attitude get all distracted. My I, I like keeping my attitude determined. How do you fix your attitude? How do you fix a weak attitude? Your attitude comes from your habits. Your habits create this narrative about yourself. So if you have a habit of running. Your attitude will be, I'm a bitch. If you have an attitude of quitting or attitude of uh, running away from challenges, then your attitude will become, I can't do it. But if you have a habit of stepping up to the challenge, if you have a, a habit of walking around with your chest out and your chin up with pride and confidence, then your attitude will be, I'm the fucking guy. Your attitude just comes from your habits, bro. You, cre- you create your attitude through your habits. 
Because guess what? Let me give you an example. If I have a habit of going for what I want, I could be in the gym and I say, you know what? I just did three sets. I got a little more in me. I want a stronger body. I know I go for what I want. So my attitude is going to tell me from my habit of going for what I want that I can do that last set. I go outside of the gym. Then I see a woman. So another something else I want. I want first the gym was I want the stronger body. Then seeing a woman is I want her. I want to talk to her. I want to give her my number or something like that. Right now, my attitude says, oh, you always go for what you want. This this is no different. Right. Then I'm at home. Then I'm making money. You know, I got goals, financial goals. Then I'm, I'm, you know, I'm checking my savings. I'm checking my investments. I'm like, all right, I want this car. I have a habit of going for what the fuck I want. So what the hell you think I'm going to do about this car I want? But if you created all these habits and all your actions, you inconsistent, you indecisive, you're, you're, you're full of fear. You always duck, dodge, and avoid. Now you added. Now you just told yourself who you are. You've been you've been showing yourself who you are. Man, you a bit you a bitch ass nigga, bro. You you a weak ass nigga, bro. Like you ain't going to approach her. You know you never do shit like that anyway. You, you get that car. Who do you think you are? You ain't approach that woman. You ain't work harder in the gym. You ain't you ain't wake up and and go apply that job. Now you think you want to go for a girl that you want. You don't never go for what you want. So why would you start now? That's how you develop your attitude, bro. So create ad- habits that set us up to be more confident. Oh my God. Did I even mention the word confidence? I always say the color is orange. And you niggas say, so basically it, it's it's a tangerine. So, so basically it's yellow mixed with black and, you know. Nigga, I said the color is orange. <laughs> Yo. Right, confidence is a byproduct. You niggas look at the actions and then call it confidence. You'll look at the actions and then describe describe it as confident. Whole time, I just got a habit of being this. <laughs> I approach this woman. I apply to that job. I, 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 I network at this event. I made a goal and I went for it. I just have a habit of going for what I want. You can call it confidence. You can describe it. You can observe it and describe it as confidence. It's just my habits. It's just how I am. It's just how I'm how I built myself. I'm built like that. You know what I'm saying? That's how you got to look at it. You can't look at it like, oh, you know, this person is just so confident, man. This person, that's that's the vibe. You're looking at the effect. You ain't looking at the cause. You ain't looking at the you ain't looking at what what, what made him that way. That's ambition. We just didn't know how to growing up in Philly shape your mindset and life attitude. Honestly, growing up in a city like Philly, bro, It'll either make you or break you. And this is an example. I, I'm, I actually can really set this tone. Because let's say you you go to school. You used to getting bullied. And you used to letting that shit slide. The same mentality of a person who lets themselves get bullied and lets that shit slide is the same motherfucker who will look at a woman and not approach her. That's the same motherfucker who will get challenged or caught out and then they'll, they'll avoid or they'll tuck their tail and put their head down. It's the same motherfucker that you put you put them in a situation of applying pressure, they'll fold under pressure. It's the same shit. Because it's all a byproduct of that person's self-esteem. It's all a byproduct of that, that person's like perspective of themselves on how they perceive themselves. Now, mind you, that's the person who has been broken. But if challenges have made you, if people have tried to fuck with you and you stood your ground and said, man, fuck you. I don't care who you, like, I don't care if I lose. You just got to beat me up. Like, if you, you started to get that kind of heart, that kind of grit, that kind of resilience, that shit do not leave you, bro. Because then, guess what? I'm telling you, that same grit from growing up fighting, from growing up, I don't even want to describe other shit. Doing, having to, you know, do what I needed to do to get what I want, it has followed me in every area of my life. I've gone to school, going to college, and had the same mentality. Like I, I, when I when I need when I want something, I go I do whatever the fuck it takes, because I've been I've been poor, bro. I've been literally hungry, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that shit travels into how you live your life. And so some people that say, man, it's too much, man. I can't handle it. So they've they've adopted that attitude, but that's not that kind of attitude I've adopted from struggling. That's not the kind of attitude I've adopted from the challenges that was put before me. 
I'd sit there and conquer my shit. So what? guess what I'm going to always continue to do with all my life decisions? Conquer my fucking challenges. Been doing this since a kid, bro. You create these, you create your confidence, bro. You create your habits. You know what I'm saying? If you, if, this, is why, this is why for people, when life is too easy, they create the habit of leisure. They, they create the habit of relaxing all the time. So when life gets tough, they, they used to relaxing. You can't relax in a tough situation. You can't relax when it's time to make a move. It's time to make a move. It's time to be focused. It's time to work hard. It's time to grind. They can't stay focused. They, they only used to being able to focus when things are easy. So they can't, they can't lock in. They're not even used to being tested like that. What what people say? I'm 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 you new to this? I'm true to this. That's 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 a good saying for that. Can you explain positioning in a conversation? Get the Patreon, bro. Get the Patreon. Without because if you have to say without spoiling the Patreon, we already talked about this on two streams ago, two or three streams ago. Fences, I appreciate the Twitch Prime sub. Chad, my line or did we not talk about this like two or three streams ago? And a plug should have posted it. A plug should have clipped all them bits and put that shit together. Ty approaches you like five minutes before now, bro. Bitch rejected me so hard. My chest hurting for real. You are such a loser and it's disgusting. Please never type in my chat again. I've been seeing your name in the chat just say loser ass shit for months now. And it just doesn't get better. I think you'll forever be a loser your entire life. And you're not a loser because she rejected you. You're a loser because of how you came in here and started bitching. Oh, my chest hurt. Nigga, she was allowed to say no the moment you talked to her. You you just want to be a loser, bro. Be be a loser somewhere else, please, P please. It's like it's like repulsive. It's like it's like toxic around here. Like keep that energy out of here, bro. Please go to somebody else's chat. They might relate to you. They might say, "Oh man, when she rejected me, man, my chest started hurting. I went home and cried." You know what? That bitch would have rejected me, and I would have bagged the bitch two women behind her. I would have, and then another, as that girl rejected me, I would have went for another chick I wanted. And then went home and said, man, a nigga like me, <laughs> shoot or shoot, nigga. I go for what I want. I don't give a fuck. I go for what I want. Oh, but you still crying about your chest hurting. Loser, man. Please leave. Just never say something in my chat ever again. I'm giving you permission to, like, block me. Ban, ban me, unfollow me, unsubscribe. Whatever you got to do, please. Because you don't want to win. You don't want to win. It's just filtered all in your mind, bro. <laughs> Steve gonna tell him go two two rooms down to the left. <laughs> you in the wrong room, nigga. You know what I'm saying? L's don't make us. L's give me an opportunity to learn something, an opportunity to be better. I don't think like you just thought. You gotta be you gotta be the experience, not trying to play one. Come on, bro. Cause you honestly, you tell me, you know what? I lied, chat. My chest do hurt after I get rejected. You know why my chest hurt? Let me tell you, I'm gonna put y'all in my mind after I get rejected. So after I get rejected, right? You know what I say to myself? I say, damn, she missed the opportunity to fuck with me. I could imagine the nigga she gonna go fuck with. Oh my God, I get sick to my stomach thinking about it. She don't even know who I am. Because when you get rejected, it's a, it's a, it's a surface level perception. Like she don't even know who you are. So she go fuck, I can imagine I get rejected and then she go home to some loser. Like, Oh, that hurt my stomach, bro. That just fucked my uh, my chest be heavy, man. My chest heavy thinking about it now, bro. Could you imagine getting rejected and then she go home to some nigga like uh, he's just a pure loser, he's a bum. He just he just he just it's just sad, bro. It's sad to think about, man. Cause if she ain't fuck with me, who she fucking with? <laughs> oh man, my chest do be hurt, man. I, I my fault, bro. We actually do relate on some level. What people would say, fake it, do you, fake it till you make it. What do you think about that? I mean, there's it's certain ways you could do that. You know what I'm saying? Your, your body language can trick your brain, trick your mind into feeling confident. That's a real thing. Like, you, if you express very open and confident body language, it, it like tricks your mind into feeling more confident. But fake it till you make it. The funny part is, once your actions back up a belief, your brain doesn't know the difference. So like you can convince, you can literally fake it till you make it, and then you're as you're faking it, you're already convincing yourself that you're that guy. It's like a weird thing. 
it's like delusional confidence and then it just becomes real because at that point at that point what's the difference if you act like it what's the difference you're you'll start believing yourself you know what i'm saying you'll start convincing yourself <clears throat> so affirmation works do we just describe affirmations or actions Because my nigga Dean says, game is what game does. Confidence is what confidence does. Sexy is what sexy does. Seductive is what... Come on, man. Lazy is what lazy does. Should you tell a woman she looks better without makeup? If so, how do you tell them? A million things you could tell a woman. And you asking me this sentence. A million things I could say out of my mouth to her. And you, you think I'm sitting here going around... You look so much better without makeup, girl. Which what's next? What you gonna tell her? Oh my God, the the the, the purple pocketbook fits you so well. What you what you gonna say next, bro? <laughs> yo, if you that guy, your gun is anything you say to. Her. Come on, bro. The mind's powerful at making the body strong or weak. Tell him, man. Todd, so if a group of niggas are trying to peck you for no reason, would you remove yourself from the situation or fight back all smoke? I've been jumped before. You don't have to ask me, what would I do? I've been jumped. And I only got jumped because I punched the shit out the nigga in his face. You know, I don't have to live through what ifs, would you, and all this. Nigga, I done been in so many fights in my life, I can't even get started on which, which story I could tell. I, I don't, I'm not one of them niggas. I, man, I, I would do this. There's so many people that live through saying what they would do. But when you put them in a situation of pressure, it's fight or flight. And every time, the same motherfucker who always say, oh, man, I would never, man. Oh, if, if that was me, they always be the same motherfuckers that never been tested, never been put under pressure in any way, shape, or form. My pride always been one of the biggest things about me. Remember Andrew Tate said the brokies would judge him acting like they was able to judge rather than going out and doing something. Yo, that's the the part of where society is going nowadays people do not live their own lives bro all they do is go on their phone open it and look at what the discourse is look at what people are talking about look at what people are posting and look at what people are doing there's only a small group of people actually no let me not use the internet to generalize on the internet it's like dominated by people who spend most of their time on the internet. So you do not get the average person who doesn't even have the time to check social media, might not even have an account on there. So when you're living things and you're living them, doing things on camera or whatever, you're putting yourself out there in front of people who do not go outside. They just, all they do is live their life pointing, judging, watching. It's the biggest bullshit ever. Like I said, with that Chibu clip, y'all remember that Chibu clip we looked at on stream? Where it was, they was at a party, and you know, the girl was shaking her ass or whatever. He went behind her, she danced on him, and then she turned around and she was like, okay, you know, she wasn't attracted to him, so she made a face. Now, on the surface, I laughed. I, I'm like, <laughs> that shit funny as shit, right? But on some real shit, that could have happened to anybody. Nigga, that could have happened to me. I, I never did, but it could have happened to anybody, bro. It could have happened to anybody. No shade about me saying it never did. I've seen it happen to niggas though. Like it, it literally could happen to anybody. She could turn around and be like, oh no, I'm, I'm only dancing with my friends. Or, oh no, you know, I'm not dancing on no, no guys tonight. You know, that happens all the time, bro. So it's just the kind of face she made that was hilarious. So, but you got niggas in the comments going, oh, ha ha, da 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 da. Oh, never been to a party in their life. Never been outside. Never danced dance with a woman. Never approached a woman. Never enjoyed themselves. Never put themselves out there. But have are so quick to have an opinion. Terrible, man. I'm telling you, the least the least judgmental people are the ones who actually experience shit in life. You'll never really get judged from somebody who has taken L's. You'll never get judged from somebody who has um, experience. You'll always get the most judgment from people who have never done it or never lived their life. For example, every person who told I can even go back to this. Every person who told me not to drop out of school when I was trying to uh, focus on content. None of them had any businesses. Is that a coincidence? None of them were entrepreneurs. None of them have ever taken a risk on this level of magnitude, but were the quickest ones to say, don't do it. But the, all the people, every time when I went back to school, when I went back into classes, every time I spoke to a content creator, they would say, why are you in school? What the fuck? Knowing how much money I make, how big my platform, why are you in school? 
so it's funny that it was like the opposite reaction. I'm telling you, all your biggest critics will never be somebody who has experience. You know what people with experience do? People don't. People with experience don't judge. They either give advice, or at least when they're being blunt with you or they're being honest with you, they're telling you something that's probably helpful. Oh, I'm getting call. Oh shit! I did order some food. You know what? Yeah. Hello. It's open. Elevator to the right. All right. Tav. <laughs> Tav. Oh my god, bro. All right, never mind. People's opinions are low key a disguise for their envy. It's not. All right, all right. Everybody ain't envious. Everybody, er, everybody ain't envious. You know what it be sometimes? They're projecting their fear onto you. Or their perception of you, their image of you in their heads is way too small. Because think about it, any time somebody try to do something bold or something out of character, the first person, the first response that you get is what, chat? What is the first response? Y'all should predict this off the top. What is the first response? It's, it's either, it's, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's two things. It's either you can't, then they start telling you what you can and cannot do. Or it's, who do you think you are? That's the one I was thinking of in my head. Somebody, will, somebody always say, "Who do you think you are?" Really, that's a that's a backwards question. Because who do you think I am? That's the reason you probably challenging who the fuck you think I am. Because you think I I can't do this. You think I'm not able to do that, or you think I shouldn't. That's why you saying that shit to me. You wouldn't be saying it to me if you thought highly of me, or you thought I was able to do it. That's the first thing to do is challenge your perception of yourself. Who do you think you are? Let me show you. How about that? Fuck you. That's who I think I am. I told her I'm finna bring you back down to earth. Oh, wow. You're so smooth, bro. Damn, you got her with that one. All right, Steve, I was talking about that. People will see things on the news like news, like a shooting in a theater. They don't want to go outside anymore to watch a movie. No, literally. My homie just said that, man. People will say, people will see uh, Tom from... Afghanistan get rejected by Margaret and then they'll say oh I'm never approaching a woman again can't even live their lives through their own experience can't even live their lives from their own perspective they're just continually living through their 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 perception of the world I would hate to experience that it really does sound miserable that's, the, that's just the direction that the internet is taking people though Can you explain positioning in a conversation yeah, without spoiling Patreon? Summertime, I'm in my bag, but I'm not used to all this bread and want to spend my money on shit that's gonna make me money. Do you got some financial game for me or some assets I can you invest in and at a young age? I'm gonna tell you first. I appreciate the uh, seven months. You probably don't have enough money to make a substantial investment to really uh, bring you back, uh, you know, interest or gain on your money the way that you're thinking. I'm not saying you can't invest at all. You can invest $50 for all I care, right? The point I'm making is that start building some capital. Start building some like savings, some like start stacking your bread before you just go, oh, well, I want to invest here. I want to invest here. I want to invest here. I want to do this. I do this. Start edu buy books. Educate yourself on what are the right areas to put your money in. Because before I started making a salary, which before I started making a, a surplus of money, I already knew where a lot of money should be going before i even made over 10k a, a month or whatever right i already knew what the area, where i should have been putting my money and where i should not be putting it so when you say something like oh uh, where do i start investing and spend it i doubt you're making over x y i'm not even gonna name a number i'm not gonna disrespect you it's not about that the point is you need to learn more about how money works and where it moves and what it does and shit like that before you even start thinking of oh what company should i invest in Learn more about money. Learn more about money. Oh, so you are making 10K a month. Last time I made 10K a month was July 2021. I vividly remember. I track my I track my monthly income every month. I keep good track of my money. I manage my money very well. Ty, is it possible to have a scenario-based test to help with the mouthpiece? Scenario-based? No, nigga. What? You just really said scenario-based test when the best test is outside of your front door? Are you serious?
Most millionaires are created through real estate. Don't know if it's a lot of. The reason most millionaires are created through real estate is because most of the time people invest in a uh, buy a home, and then the home appreciates over time, and then they leverage that to go against you know to 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 go against other investments. So now they have that collateral. Um, I work at the mall, so I'll be trying to get my social skills up. But now I can't even talk to the shorty someone because I got a whole reputation, even though I ain't kiss none of them. Um, you said you had to deal with that. How do you overcome it? I just, I'm gonna tell you something. My reputation ain't never stopped me from doing what I wanted to do. So do you, do you even asking the question of how do I overcome it? it ain't, it's let me know you're not a real slayer. Because if you can't beat the, if you can't beat against the odds, you ain't really a slayer. If you can't beat and then she hit you with, oh, but you used to talk to my friend. Or, or, oh, you, you can't, like, like. If you can't go under pressure, bro, if you can't go under challenges, bro, you ain't really a slayer, bro. And I had the, some of the most formidable challenges. I mean, I like my the, the shit got so bad. People would say I, I hit chicks I, ne I only spoke to one time. I told y'all, I'll never forget this, this one chick told me this rumor she heard about me. She heard I cut women off if they wear sweatpants. <laughs> oh my God, I'll never forget this, man. She said, I heard you cut women off if they wear sweatpants. Because my high school, we had no uniform. So we could wear any clothes that we want. And I was like, before I even like laughed, I swear to God, I lied to you now. Before I even laughed or reacted to what she just told me, I said, did you believe it? And she hesitated. And I said, you know the f*** what? Oh, this one I knew. This one I knew, man. This one I knew. Human beings in general are very... Intelligent beings, you're very intelligent beings, man. You're all very intelligent. But I'll never forget that was the craziest rumor I ever heard about myself. I cut women off for wearing sweatpants. <laughs> That's hilarious. They never do their research firsthand. They actually do do their research. Is that the information is poisoned. That's the problem. Who is he? Oh, girl, you don't want to talk to him. Yo, I never, oh my God, if I told you how many times. And came back to me about shit like, like, all right, because when the chick you start talking to a chick, she might not fully know. It's two scenarios, right? When you got a reputation, this Slayer talk. If you ain't, if you ain't him, just listen. Just sit back in your your back seat. You got two scenarios, right? One scenario is when you when you got her, when you bagged her, when you gave her your number, you got her number, talked to her, shot to shot, whatever. She didn't know who you were, and then when she likes you, start liking you a little bit more. Then she says, oh, I'm guys, I'm talking to such and such. Do you know who he is? Or she'll show her friends. And then that's when now your reputation come up, right? They say, oh, he's blah, blah, blah. So that's where it's, I remember, I'll never forget. I was messing with this one chick. She didn't go to my school, but she was in this program. Like a, like a, uh, sometimes girls or in high school, it's not a girl thing. It's a high school thing. You in high school, you could take college courses from like the community college and like a, some kind of like dual enrollment thing. You know what I'm talking about? So she was in this program with a girl that went to my high school. The girl, this girl, she was a Dominican chick. She didn't go to my high school. But she she went and one of the girls coincidentally was at my high school. Now, I do not know how this conversation happened. But she ended up talking to the girl and like somehow I came up. And then the girl told her, oh, he's a He broke my friend's heart. Now, the broke her friend's heart part was true. But... Who asked you, brother? Who, who, who? Why, why are you spicing and razzling dazzling to all the mix? So this is a situation where the girl didn't know who I was or anything. I just, you know, we just met individually. And then that's just a terrible, that's terrible RNG, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that's a bad coincidence. But sometimes it even happened like that in your own high school where like she started asking around and kind of find out this girl done talk to you, this girl done talk to you, blah, blah, blah. First case scenario is if the if the girl already knew who you were before you even spoke to her ever, like she just heard about you from rumors, she just um uh people done talked about you one of her you already talked to one of her home girls you done talked to her cousin, it it could be something like that, <laughs> and I don't even want to talk about those situations so let's just stop there before it get a little bit toxic man, before it get a little bit toxic man. Long so much in the year for time, ain't even 18 yet, man. Come on, bro. How long did it take to learn about money? Y'all always ask 
questions like that. Stop asking how long something takes. Because if I told you it took 20 years, would it, would it deter you from going towards your goal? That's such a question. Like, how, how long is it going to take? You always want some shit quick, bro. I read eight of those books in two months. I forced it to take two months, nigga. The fuck you mean how long it took? I didn't give a fuck how long it took. I cared about what the goal was, and the goal was financial literacy. And best believe, I got that shit done. As long as it would have taken. As long as, long as it would have took is the, is the real answer, nigga. Ever had a woman call you a dog? <laughs> Not in the way you thinking. <laughs> it takes as long as you want it to. No, but some shit is a process. Some shit is a long-term process process so so what you gonna quit you gonna not work for it now that's why that's a weak question the real question is what does it take does it take me reading books does it take me watching these videos does it take me breaking bad habits does it take me cutting some people off does it take me losing sleep does it take me waking up earlier does it take me changing how i think does it, what does it take is the real question stop asking that shit like how long does it take